Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I am super excited to be sharing with you our DIY laundry room makeover. This is part three in a series so I will link it down below if you guys want to catch up and kind of see where we started. I have always wanted cabinets above the washer and dryer. I do not like these wire shelving racks so I'm going to go ahead and remove them. I'm going to start by taking everything off and then I'm going to unscrew them from the wall and as I was doing this I realized that these were not screwed into the wall. I kept unscrewing and unscrewing and nothing was happening. That's when I realized that these were just drywall anchors and once you are installing them and you put in the screw, it pops open in the back, which keeps it in the drywall. So it took me a while to figure out how to get these out. But once I finally did, I went ahead and took them down. After I removed all of the drywall anchors from the wall, I was left with a bunch of holes. So I'm just gonna take a scraper and kind of scrape them a little bit smooth. And then I'm gonna take some spackling and go through and fill in all of the holes. When you're sanding, it really creates a lot of dust. So I took the shop vac and was holding it underneath my little sander just to kind of help keep the dust down. Now you'll notice that I didn't fill in all of the holes. That's because some of these are gonna be covered up by the cabinets. Because we have a texture on the wall, I needed to blend these spots in. Now you can buy a can of orange peel splatter to spray on here, but I didn't wanna buy one. We do have a big, huge hopper spray gun thing for doing large areas, which is what we did in this room, but that was a little overkill for these small spots. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of the spackling, put it in a cup and add a little bit of water to thin it out. Then I'm gonna take my paintbrush and dip it into my thinned spackling mixture and I'm gonna kinda dab it onto the wall, creating a texture-like appearance. I'm gonna let this dry and then I'm gonna go through and do it a few more times just to kinda build it up and help blend it in a little bit. Now it didn't match perfectly, but it really worked out well. Most of it's gonna be kinda covered anyway, so you're not gonna really be able to see it. After I've built up a few layers of that, I'm gonna take my mudding sander and just lightly go over it to knock down the sharp corners and to blend it in more. As you can see, they don't match perfectly, but I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Okay, now let's go ahead and prime it and paint it. I'm just gonna be using a Valspar primer here from Lowe's, and then I'm gonna use a little whiz roller to get these small little areas. And as you can see, my little roller is a little bit too big for my tray here. After the primer was dried, I went ahead and put the wall color on. This is Repost Gray by Sherwin-Williams, which we had matched with Valspar. This is the color that we absolutely love, and we're going to be painting our whole house this color. It is a really beautiful, soft gray. I ended up doing two coats of this because you can totally see the primer and the patches through the first coat. So once I did the second coat, it blended in really well, and you couldn't even tell. Because my little roller was a little bit too big for the tray, I ended up just dipping my paint stick in the paint can and just kind of rolling my brush on that. And it made for an easy cleanup and it worked just as great. Now I am painting a larger area than just my patches because I've noticed that if you paint over existing paint, even if it's from the same can, you can always tell where you stopped and where you started. So I'm kind of doing a large area just to kind of help this color blend in. I've literally always wanted cabinets over my washer and dryer in the laundry room, and they're so expensive. We were gonna get the ones that matched our base cabinets that we got from Lowe's, but they're just so expensive. So I decided to go into the kitchen and steal a few cabinets and use those in the laundry room. After I took off the crown molding, I took the doors off, and then I had my husband help me remove these from the wall because it is a two-person job. Now, if you're wondering why I'm stealing cabinets from the kitchen, don't worry, we're not gonna be ending up using these. We are redoing our kitchen and I wanna paint the cabinets. So I'm using these as my practice and they're gonna go in the laundry room. So even if they don't turn out perfect, that's okay. I'll get practice and I'll get better for when we do our kitchen. And then I removed all of the hinges and I put them in bags so that way I could keep track of them. So to prep your cabinets for painting, you're gonna wanna wash them down really good and use a good degreaser like crud cutter or something like that. Some people use TSP, but the primer that I was using is not compatible with TSP, so you just wanna make sure that you pay attention to the products that you're using. So 
So painting your cabinets is a very long, tedious, very detailed process. I joined a professional group of cabinet painters where I learned a lot from. So basically, I'm just gonna take my orbital sander and I think it's 220 grit sandpaper on there and I'm just gonna go around and sand all of the flat surfaces with this. And then I'm gonna go in with a piece of sandpaper or a sanding block and I'm gonna get all these ridges. These cabinets were such a pain to sand because of all the ridges and grooves, so it took me quite a while. Also, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you're wearing a proper dust mask to keep all of that dust out of your lungs. Once I'm done with all of the doors, I'm going to do the cabinet boxes as well. I only have three doors and this double cabinet box as well as a single one, but still it took quite a while and my arm was pretty tired. Now that I've got all the sanding done and I've kind of let the dust settle, I'm gonna go in with a damp cloth. You can also have some denatured alcohol to clean that off, but you wanna get them all dust free. I also sanded the back sides as well, so make sure that you do both sides of the cabinet to get the best results. Because our cabinets are oak, they have a very deep grain to them, and I don't really like the look of painted wood with the grain showing through, so I wanted to find a grain filler that would fill that in, so I found a product called Aqua Coat, so I went ahead and did that on two of the doors, and it was a clear gel, so it was a little hard to see where you had already applied it. It also comes in white. I didn't know that when I bought it, or else I would have definitely got that one. So basically you put it on with like a putty knife, and it is kind of in a gel form, so it was sort of easy to apply but it was really hard to kind of thin out and get rid of the ridges and stuff from like the scraping knife and stuff. You can also apply it with a rag or with your finger, which is what I ended up doing like on the curved parts and um, like the arches and stuff. It was a very frustrating product to work with because if you did not get it perfectly like smoothed out, once it dried, it didn't really sand and you can definitely see your flaws through the paint. It's said to apply two to four coats for best coverage. I ended up doing two just because I was tired of this and it definitely did did not cover the grain nearly as much as I had hoped. You could definitely still see the grain through the paint, which at this point I was like, I don't care. I'm just done with this. It was really frustrating. It also had a very, very, very strong odor, which technically I should have been wearing a respirator mask and not this um, dust mask. I could still smell it. So I ended up taking my mask off halfway through because it was like trapping the smell in my mask. I did open the basement windows so I had plenty of ventilation, but then I found this other product called Timber mate and it was way easier to work with but it was more work with sanding as you can see I did one of the doors with that you can definitely see where you filled the grain I was much happier with the results of this it was still way too much work this whole painting process took me two weeks to complete just for these three cabinets once I was done with my grain filler, I sanded it down again and then wiped them clean so that way I can go ahead and prime them. The primer that I'm using is the Bin Primer. It is the shellac base, not the synthetic shellac. I accidentally got that one at first. You do not want that one. This one is a stain blocker and it's great for wood cabinets, especially oak, so that way you don't get any yellowing and the oak doesn't bleed through your paint. I ended up brushing all of the little grooves and then I just had a little foam roller that I got at Home Depot that was specifically for cabinet painting. The stuff was pretty watery so I had to be really careful to make sure that I didn't have any drips. After I finish the first coat on the cabinet doors and the cabinet boxes, I'm gonna go ahead and let that dry and I'm going to put my little paint tray in a Ziploc bag and wrap some plastic wrap around my roller. That way I don't have to clean up in between coats because I only had to wait a few hours for dry time. So then I'm gonna take some 320 sandpaper and lightly go over that and then dust it and paint a second coat. Then I can flip them over and do the same process on the back side. However, I did not do the grain fill on the back. So now time to move on to the actual cabinet paint. So I am using the Benjamin Moore Advanced Paint in the color Chantilly Lace. Now, who knew that there were like a million shades of white and I wasn't quite sure which one I wanted to go with. So I just decided to go with this one to test it out and I'm not sure if I'm gonna do this with the kitchen or not, but it definitely came out a bright white, which is what I wanted to go for, but I'm not sure if it'll look right in our kitchen. 
So yeah, this stuff is really great and easy to work with. It is self-leveling, so you don't get any like brush marks or roll marks. I would, did not use a sprayer with this, but when we do our kitchen, we will do a sprayer. But if you don't have a sprayer, then rolling it with this special foam roller meant for cabinets works out really good. The only thing I didn't like about this paint was that it had a 16 hour recoat time. So I painted my first coat on and then I had to wait 16 hours. Then I lightly sanded with 320 grit sandpaper and then I was able to do my second coat. Then after 16 hours, I was able to flip them over and paint the front sides waiting another 16 hours before sanding and doing my second coat. This whole painting process took several days because of that. I'm also gonna be painting some shelving that is gonna be going in the laundry room above the sink right next to the cabinet. So I wanted them to be the same color. This is just some um, MDF pre-primed boards. So I didn't have to prime that or anything, but I did two coats on this as well. So while I was waiting for the cabinets to dry so I can put them on the wall, there's actually a 30 day cure time. I did not wait 30 days to put them on the wall, um, but I did wait about a week before we got them on the wall. So I'm gonna clean up the laundry room and the laundry area, find the studs, and then that way they're all ready for when my husband can help me hang them up on the walls. So my husband is the expert at this part. He just measured everything and made marks and lines to make sure it was all level. And I just held it where he told me to so he can screw them in. And of course they turned out perfect because my husband was able to get them on the wall for me. Before we put the cabinet doors on, I thought it would be really fun to put contact paper down on the shelves and the back just to kind of decorate it and make it look a little bit prettier and kind of hide the beige brown shelves. I just got some plain white contact paper from Walmart just for the shelf part. Now it was a lot harder to apply than I thought it would be. If you look closely, it does not look very good. There's some bubbles, but far away it looks pretty good and I'm glad I did it because it just gives it a really nice clean look and it'll be really easy to clean if any of the laundry products spill on them. I also did the bottom portion of the cabinets white and this was extremely hard to do. I definitely am not doing this in the kitchen. It was way too much work, but I do love how it turned out. I got this really fun gray and white design here for the backs and the sides of the cabinets. This was a little bit hard to apply. I did have to apply it in sections, so there is a seam, but I was able to line it up and you can barely see it. I thought this was just a really fun addition to the backs of the cabinets and it just made it look so nice. I got some black metal shelving brackets from Amazon to hang up my shelf, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put those up. After I got the brackets on the wall, I put the shelf up and I made marks where the screws were gonna go into, that way I could pre-drill the holes and it would just be easier to get the screw into that way. I have two shelves going in, so this is the bottom shelf, and then after this, I just measured how far I wanted the next one to go up and I put that one up as well. I didn't record that though. Now it's time to screw the hinges back on all of the doors. And then of course I had to have my husband help me to hang the doors because I tried it and then I could not get it. So I held it while he screwed them in place. Now it's time to finally put stuff in the cabinets. I'm just going to put stuff in here nice and orderly and I'd love to get some bins and jars and stuff for all this stuff, make it look really pretty, but I'm gonna save that for another time, another video, so I'm just gonna put it all in here like I have it. I have some fun ideas to decorate these shelves, but for now I'm just gonna go with what I have and I'll rearrange it later. This empty picture frame will have something in it, but I just decided to put it up here until I can get it filled. Now it's time to put the hardware on. I just have some oil rubbed bronze poles that look very similar to the ones that we have on the lower cabinets. Amazon didn't have those anymore, so I just found these at Home Depot.
My wonderful little helper Miles volunteered to vacuum up all of the little wood shavings. And here is the final finished project. This used to be the doorway to our linen closet and we took out the wall right here. So that way we had this hallway into what used to be half of our master closet. I still want to add a few finishing touches and some other things, so stay tuned for that. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.